The true trajectory of the Earth in the universe. Definitely not the Sun with eight planets. As simple as spiral motion in the Milky Way. Many people are misled. The true motion of the Earth in the universe is extremely complex. We need to calculate the actual motion of the Earth. You have to calculate. How many reference frames does the system in which the Earth is located have? The Earth orbits the Sun. The Sun orbits the galaxy. What does the Milky Way galaxy move around? Count all the way up, all the way to the edge of the universe. To calculate the true motion of the Earth, we need to refer to all the motions of the universe. Have to calculate. If you just calculate the trajectory of the Earth in the galaxy, it's easier. Just calculate how the Earth moves around the Sun. How does the Sun move around the welcome movement? Finally, stack the two reference frames together. You can get the true trajectory of the Earth in the galaxy. But that's just Earth moving through the galaxy. To calculate the trajectory of the Earth throughout the universe, you also have to count the Milky Way. Cluster of galaxies to a new trajectory. And then there are versions on the internet as superstar groups. Can you key a supercluster? Just like the Matryosh Kadal, the true trajectory of the Earth in the universe. All reference frames have to be added. Then let's push it up step by step. You can calculate the Earth's ambitions. Real motion in the universe. First, the Earth rotates around the Sun. It's not a standard circular motion. It's an oval shape. The Sun is at a focal point in the ellipse. But the truth about this ellipse, more like a circle. And it's not the oval shape that's obvious in the video. We know that the Earth's perihelion is 147 million kilometers. Aphelion is 150 to million km. The relative error between perihelion and aphelion is very small. The difference is only 3.3%. In fact, the ball is at the focus of the ellipse. It's not fixed because the sun is still under attack. The attractive forces of other celestial bodies. This would cause the sun to be in the elliptical focus. There will be a slight change. After understanding the true motion of the Earth in the solar system, let's take a look at the solar system in silver. Real movement in the river system. First, the Sun moves relative to the center of the galaxy. The speed is about 250 kilometers per second. Circle around the center of the galaxy. 225 million to 250 million Earth years. The last time the Earth was in the Milky Way, in this position now, probably to 130 million years ago, it was the peak of the dinosaurs. The trilobite just went extinct. In fact, the Sun orbits the center of the galaxy. It's not as simple as we thought. First of all, the Milky Way is so big. There are at least 200 billion stars in it. So the solar system appears to be very small. And because of the Milky Way, the stars in the inner circle are also moving rapidly. This results in the galactic mass of giant stars also changing. So it's hard to calculate directly the true path of the sun around the silver star. We need to put the sun, put it into a larger system. Secondly, in this system, the star must be moving at a speed similar to that of the sun. In this way, the sun is relative to this system, can be roughly regarded as static. In astronomy, the frame of reference in which such a system resides, it's called a local stationary criterion, English abbreviation LSR, and the constant within this system. The number of stars also exceeds tens of millions. 
So this system, the proportion of mass in the entire galaxy is also relatively large. It's better calculated. And then, just calculate the overall speed of the LS to around the silver core. Then calculate the motion gap between the Sun and LS2. Let's synthesize it. You can calculate the reality of the Sun orbiting the silver line. The latest calculations of the movement show that the speed of the system around the silver wire is 202 to 241 kilometers per second. The horizontal direction of the Sun relative to LS2. The average speed error is 5 kilometers per second. And the Sun, also about 8, drifting towards the center of the galaxy at a speed of kilometers per second, and at a speed of about 7 kilometers per second. Movement perpendicular to the silver plate. Comprehensive calculation. The Sun is traveling at 255 kilometers per second. Around Sagittarius, the rotation of nearby star systems. Meanwhile, the Sun, there's also a tendency to move vertically towards the silver plate. So every million years after the Sun, will climb to 300 light years above the center of the silver plate. Then it starts falling again. Then it starts to climb again. Complete such a cycle. It will take about 60 million years. And such a cycle, just at the time of the mass extinction, you can ask the monk. For example, every 63 million years on average, there will be a mass extinction event. The cause of mass extinctions is nothing more than climate, geology, or alien asteroid impact. Maybe these reasons of the attractive forces in the solar system. For example, the fifth mass extinction occurred 65 million years ago. The currently accepted reason is that there is a diameter. A 10-kilometer asteroid hit the Earth. Scientists predict the position of the solar system at that time. Its external attractive force is much greater than it is now. This attractive force will spread to every planet in the solar system. Smaller planets are disturbed by attractive forces. Its orbit changes even more significantly. This attractive force imbalance would create an asteroid belt. More asteroids lose their attractive force out of the asteroid belt. And then it hit the Earth 65 million years ago. Maybe the solar system, the asteroid hit the Earth. But that's very unlikely. Because the farther away the asteroid from the Earth, the less likely it is to hit the Earth. So back to business. We know that now. The true motion of the Sun in the galaxy. However, the Milky Way is also in motion. We know, in the galaxy, above the scale, the structure of the universe is layered. Milky Way, 50 galaxies including the nearest Andromeda galaxy. Together, they form the local group of galaxies. It's about 10 million light years across. In the attractive force center of this group of galaxies, between the Milky Way and Andromeda, so on the scale of this cluster of galaxies, the galaxy will orbit the center of this attractive force. Then the Sun and the Earth must also be at the center of this attractive force. It's got a motion component. However, this group of galaxies and more than 100 other galaxy clusters, they form a much larger supercluster of galaxies, about 110 million light years in diameter in the attractive force center of the supercluster. It's not clear where. This is mainly due to the room. There's a lot of dark matter in the feminist cluster, and the dark matter is the determining chamber, the key attractive force of the feminist cluster. There's even bigger Rania online, key supercluster. He's 520 million light years in diameter. The center of quality in Raniakia is Pali. Attractive force source. This attractive force is also dominated by dark matter. Current understanding of this attractive force to be confirmed because above the supercluster scale, the whole structure of the universe is fibrous. 
More importantly, it contains dark matter. So the distribution of attractive force centers is extremely unpredictable. On a cosmic scale, galaxy clusters are not simply circular motion, but by dark matter and the attractive forces of superclusters. And it's basically disorganized. So from the Earth to the solar system to the galaxy, to this group of galaxies, to the virgin supercluster. The higher you go, the more disorganized you are. So the real motion of the Earth in the universe, maybe it's just an irregular. Track it all.